How can anybody describe the terror and the agony of this generation? Some of us as parents and some of us as preachers, we really don't begin to understand the agony and the terror that's going on in our high schools and colleges and the things that our young people are facing. More than that, you who have Christian kids, your children are all saved and they're, you feel they're safe. Who can explain the thousands and thousands of parents, some of you sitting here right now, the terror of knowing your kids locked in some prison house of the devil? Jesus was going to the cross and all these mothers following him. He stopped and he turned and said, don't weep for me, weep for your children. That's what I preach on the streets now. I tell them, hey, weep for your children. Yes, it's a time to weep for our children. It's time to weep for the little girls, kids smoking crack and numbing their minds, going hard and vicious at 15. That's what grieves me more than anything, to see them lose their tenderness. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will give heed and listen hereafter? He said, in the last day, there's something coming so awesome, so terrifying. This is a people plundered, despoiled, all of them trapped in caves, who are hidden away in prisons. They'll become a prey with none to deliver them, and a spoil with none to say, give them back. Then the woman gave birth to a son and named him Samson. And the child grew up and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him. This is the end of Samson. Then the Philistines seized him and gouged out his eyes. And they brought him down to Gaza and bound him with bronze chains. He was a grinder in a prison. You and I are to learn from the life of Samson. No amount of education, no amount of Bible knowledge, not even a godly heritage, not a godly upbringing can save you from the power of sin alone. That in itself cannot pay, keep you from the power of sin. You can be born and raised in the most godly home and still be bound by the devil. You can be educated in the things of God. You can be anointed to the Holy Ghost at the beginning and slip away and be bound by the devil and wind up in the devil's prison house. Samson was raised as a Nazarite in a very godly home. Mother and father had been visited by angels. Those who had talked to God they have been given divine instructions on how to raise their child. This boy was, took a Nazarite vow. That means he was taught never to touch alcohol. This boy had been told that he was separated, that God had called him. He knew he had a call of God in his heart. The Spirit of God moved on him, stirred his heart. Here's a man of God, called by God. His nation in such dire trouble, darkness all around, and how God needed him. Where's God going to find men and women who rise up in holiness and righteousness and cry out against the sins of the land? Now Samson went to Gaza and saw the harlot there and went into her. In one act of rebellion, all of his education, all of his spiritual upbringing, all of the burden of the Lord is blown away. Everything is suddenly, it's gone. Can't lean on any past knowledge. You can't lean on any past experience. You can't lean on your godly upbringing. Where there's a godly upbringing and the young man or the young woman mixes it with faith, bathes himself in the Word of God and keeps your heart open, that's the most beautiful combination there can possibly be. And that's why some of us are preaching the gospel today. And that's why some of you have kids serving God. He sets himself on a path that's not good and he no longer despises the evil. There's no hatred of this sin in his heart. And he plans to do it once again. Take dominion over every thought and bring it into captivity and obedience to the Lord Jesus. Don't replay it in your mind. And I've seen ministers in the gospel, I've seen ministers in the ministry lose their sense of danger. This thinking, I'm special. And that's exactly what happens to Samson. He goes out one more time. And this time, the devil introduces him to Delilah. You know what her name means in Hebrew? Loosen up. Release yourself from bondage. And then also it means empty, dry, emaciated. That's all in her name. The devil introduced him to this doctrine. Relax. You've worked hard. You deserve it. Please tell me how you may be bound. So he told her all that was in his heart. Look at that. This man of God gives his heart to his sin. You know what the Bible says? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind, with all thy heart. This is a matter of the heart. There has to be a deliverance from this thing that's in your mind. 
Holy Spirit, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to come now and convict of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Oh, Lord Jesus, break every binding chain. Bring a spirit of burning. Bring a spirit of conviction. God, restore and heal by your power.